What's up everyone, welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna to be going over finalizing your SEO keyword list. So I previously went over how to do keyword research. I have my keyword research tutorial for 2022. I would highly recommend watching this video if you haven't already because it's gonna show you how to create a keyword list that looks like this one. So for me, what I generally do is use the Google Keyword Planner and a couple of other free tools to come up with topics. So ultimately what I'm trying to do is find some of these short tail keywords, some of these main topics that people are searching, and I wanna create pages that rank for those topics. So coming over to the Keyword Planner real quick, what I did in that video is I went through my shop page and I went through all the different products that I offer on my website, farmhousegoals.com, and then I took some of these different keywords like farmhouse bedding, we could use farmhouse curtains, and I went to discover new keyword and entered those keywords here. So I did farmhouse bedding, things like farmhouse furniture, farmhouse rugs, farmhouse decor, and we'll just do farmhouse curtains here as well. And when you're searching for different keywords for your business, what you do is you wanna pull out those short tail keywords. So these ones I entered are all short tail keywords. So the next part, after we come up with a list of the different topics that we wanna target, which is what I did here, is we wanna come over here to the left-hand side and pull out everything that we think is unique and something we should have its own specific page for. And then what we can do is create essentially subcategory pages under all of these main category pages. Now this is gonna vary depending on what it is you're writing about. In for my case, for farmhouse goals, it's very product-based. So if we come over to my website and we click just here on product categories, what I'm gonna be doing is trying to find a bunch of different subcategories. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I do it for a specific topic like bedding, but that's essentially what I try to do is find a bunch of different subcategories because if we come to Google and we just search farmhouse bedding here, you can see the companies that I'm competing against, Bed Bath & Beyond, Amazon, a lot of advertisements here, some images, Kohl's, we have Target, we have Wayfair, Overstock. So I'm not on the first page here, but if you look at some of these different brands here that are on the first page, they're incredibly popular. So it's difficult to rank above them. So that's where long tail keywords come in. So essentially what I do is I create my keyword list and you can see coming down here, all of these represent different topics and I already have a lot of them on my keyword list already, but farmhouse Christmas decor, that's its own topic that I can expand on with a ton of subcategories like ornaments and tree skirts and Christmas trees and all sorts of different Christmas products that I can actually target for those specific keywords. So that's essentially what we're trying to do here is come up with a list of topics that we wanna rank for. And then if we take farmhouse bedding, for example, so we scroll down here, looking at some of these examples, what I like to do is take my topics and then link them. So I link them to specific cells in my Microsoft Excel file. So let's just say we click on farmhouse pillows it's gonna bring us down to farmhouse pillows and show all of the different ways people are searching for farmhouse pillows. So if I only have one category on my website for farmhouse pillows, then I actually have opportunities for doing different sizes here, for doing pillow shams, which are a little bit different, lumbar pillows, Christmas pillows, farmhouse crochet pillow patterns. So there's a bunch of different things here that I can try to target with my own website so that I'm, if I'm not ranking for this specific keyword, I could at least rank pretty high for some of these long tail keywords that don't have as much competition. So if we scroll down here and we do farmhouse bedding. So we're gonna take farmhouse bedding. So what I like to actually do is come over here to the farmhouse bedding, this cell here, and just click on it, go to insert at the top and click on link. And we're gonna click on insert link here. And then what we're gonna do is enter the cell where that is. So in this case, it's D104, we'll click on okay. And now when I click on farmhouse bedding, it'll bring me right down to where farmhouse bedding is. So it'll bring me to all my different keywords so I can easily find them. So what we're gonna do next is figure out ways to come up with long keywords here. And this is essentially how we finalize our keyword list. We're coming up with a list of topics and then every time we click on that topic, so when it's time for me to create more content about farmhouse coffee tables, or basically create new subcategories of farmhouse coffee tables, I can click here, it'll bring me right down to coffee tables and I can see the different things that people are looking up. And if I have pages on my website for all of these different types of products, farmhouse coffee tables with wheels, then when someone goes to Google and searches for that keyword, I'm gonna be much more likely to rank and it's also so targeted that I have a list of coffee tables with wheels for sale that people can see that they're gonna be more likely to purchase than somebody who is just searching for rustic coffee tables because that's a huge broad category where people are 
not really sure what they want yet. Somebody looking for something this specific knows exactly what they want. So for farmhouse bedding, the way that I expand my keyword list after I come up with this list of topics is first you can use the Google Keyword Planner. So just enter farmhouse bedding there. So that's one thing you can do. We'll click on get results. Now the other tool, and I've talked about this tool a lot recently because it's it's become such a great tool, is Keywords Everywhere. You can install it for Google Chrome. It's completely free. They do have a paid option, but the free option gives you a ton of information. So if I go to Google and I just search farmhouse bedding, every time I search, since I have Keywords Everywhere enabled for Google Chrome, you can see it comes with the, up with a list of long tail keywords. So I can take these keywords here and I'll generally copy these keywords. I'll just open up Notepad and I'll paste them. And then what I do is go through each individual keyword and try to think about if I think I can create a specific page of products for that keyword. For example, Amazon Canada, I'm not gonna be doing. On a budget is something I could potentially do. I'm not gonna be doing Target, Maine USA, or Pottery Barn. So farmhouse bedding quilt, I would generally just look at farmhouse quilt as its own keyword, so I'd get rid of this, and I would make sure I have farmhouse quilts over here as its own topic. So that's basically the way that I look at different topics and subtopics is what people are looking for. So if we come back over and we'll finish our keyword list here, so I'm just gonna go through this pretty quickly. Okay, so all these right here, I consider to be completely unique. Now something like farmhouse style bedding, I'm not gonna target that specifically. I consider the page with farmhouse bedding to target that keyword. So that's not something I'm gonna be targeting. And if you're wondering, how do I know whether or not I should be targeting some of these long tail keywords specifically? I have a really good example here. So one of the things that came up was gray farmhouse bedding. So with keywords everywhere, I went to Pinterest. And if you go to Pinterest and you do a search here, you're gonna see a link right underneath when you have keywords everywhere enabled that says find topic ideas for farmhouse bedding. So if we click on that, it's gonna pull up a bunch of keywords related to farmhouse bedding using Pinterest. So if we scroll down here, what you're gonna see is farmhouse bedding sets romantic. That's not a keyword I've ever targeted before. And then we have gray far farmhouse bedding. So what you can do is simply do a Google search. So I did gray farmhouse bedding. And you can see first off, the images are definitely highly geared towards gray farmhouse bedding. And if we keep coming down here, you wanna look at what's ranking. So you can see there are specific pages for this search term that are ranking high. Now Amazon has just farmhouse bedding sets, but they're also Amazon, so they rank very high for a ton of different keywords. Kohl's, you can see the word gray in here. So not every single one, but if you do see a few, gray, rustic, and farmhouse bedding, if you do see a few of these, it shows some type of opportunity for you because if you can create pages for those specific keywords, that's ultimately the goal of keyword research is to find these long tail keywords. It's showing 320 average searches a month. So if I can create a page for this, and if we just scroll down, so at home, it's showing items one of 30 out of 46. So they have a total of 46 bedding sets that are considered gray and have a farmhouse theme. So if I can do the same thing on my website and try to get more than 46, then that's something that I can potentially use to rank higher than them. Now the other keyword was romantic farmhouse bedding. So this is a keyword I never even thought to target, but if we scroll down, you can see Wayfair, romantic farmhouse bedding. So a bunch of these have the word romantic in the title. So if you're seeing specific keywords that people are typing in into Google and you do a search for them yourself and you're seeing there are pages for them, then it's probably worth doing it on your own website, even though it's only showing 50 average monthly searches for this keyword. It might be something worthwhile to drive a few extra clicks every month to my website. So coming back over to Microsoft Excel and coming over here, so we went through a bunch of these different keywords here, and let's just say we're gonna use all of these here, we're gonna copy them. Now one thing you're gonna see is country farmhouse bedding, farmhouse country bedding. We never really need to worry about the order of the keywords, but we don't need them twice. So we have farmhouse king size bedding, farmhouse bedding king. I would consider both those both the same keyword. So instead of ticking bedding and ticking stripe, we'll just do stripe, get rid of this one. Okay, so we'll copy this right now. We might have some doubles in here still, but we'll paste these here. So this is essentially what I do, is I'll paste these keywords from keywords everywhere. And then the other thing we can do is use a tool like suvel.com. Just enter your main keyword here, farmhouse bedding, and it's gonna pull up some of the top search terms from Google, from Amazon, from Yahoo, and Bing, YouTube. We have answers over here. 
So you can download this just clicking right here. Sometimes I'll just copy a bunch of keywords and go through them. So just copy like this, go right over to Notepad, paste it, and we're gonna get all the keywords listed here as well. So go through them one by one, and you'll find some different things. For example, boho farmhouse bedding. I don't know if that was my original list. So since we did gray and romantic as our examples before, we'll add those to our list. So we have gray here. We'll come back over to Microsoft Excel and we'll do romantic. Okay, so we have a bunch of different keywords. And then what I can start doing is creating product categories for these different keywords and adding products to those product categories. So this is how I essentially go through and finalize my keyword list. And I do this for every single topic. So next would be bar stools, after that would be end tables, and then chairs. And as you do this, you're gonna come up with a ton of different topic type keywords. For example, farmhouse wall decor. Within this is farmhouse signs. I probably consider that its own topic, but I'm just gonna keep it in wall decor here for now. Same with farmhouse tables. So you come in here, you have end tables, dining tables, coffee tables. So these are all essentially subcategories of farmhouse tables, but they have their own subcategories as well. So it's a great way to kind of keep all your keywords organized. And then as I'm saying, okay, I wanna rank for the keyword modern farmhouse. So when someone goes to Google and types in modern farmhouse, I wanna rank for that keyword. And the best way to do that is to make sure I'm covering all of these different topics, many times with unique pages, but essentially I want them all to link back to my main page for modern farmhouse. So I can rank for as many of these keywords as possible, take advantage of that traffic and ultimately drive more sales. Now, the last thing I wanna go over is once you start creating more and more content, the next thing you need to do is use the Google Search Console. So we're looking at some data here in the Google Search Console for farmhouse goals specifically. What I did is people who are searching, I just did specific dates here and did for the search terms, farmhouse betting. So people who have queries containing farmhouse betting here, we click on apply. If we scroll down, it gave me, let's see how many at the bottom here. So 77 total keywords. So this is just another great way to find a bunch of different long tail keywords. So blue farmhouse bedding, black and white farmhouse bedding. I can basically go through and make sure I'm covering all of these different colors that people type in, all of the different styles that people type in, all the different sizes from king to twin, basically all the way down to crib. So making sure I'm covering all these keywords and I have specific pages on my website where it makes sense. So shabby chic farmhouse bedding, I don't have a page on my website about that. So you're gonna see 203 impressions. So that's something where if I create a page and then I have a title that actually matches that and I have a list of products for sale that would be considered shabby chic farmhouse bedding sets, I'd be more likely to take these impressions and turn them into clicks. That's ultimately our goal here. It does. It is a difficult process and you do need to understand how to go from topics to content so if you're writing about different types of topics, if we just come back over here to the keyword planner one more time, and let's just say we're writing about WordPress. So we're just gonna search WordPress here. We're gonna click on get results. Okay, so if we scroll down, it's giving us the most relevant keywords here. So basically what you would do is take a bunch of these keywords and make sure you're writing content about that them or make sure you have a list of WordPress themes on your website, a list of WordPress plugins on your website. You could also take a keyword like WordPress plugins and you might have something like the 20 best WordPress plugins you need for 2022, the 10 best WordPress hosting platforms, how to create a WordPress website, WordPress templates for your store, WordPress templates for a business website. So you can take all of these different keywords here and essentially what you're trying to do is come up with topics that you can write about. Even if we come up here and we add a filter and we just say, we just wanna focus on WordPress keywords, we take that, enter it as a text match, it's gonna pull up everything that people are looking for with WordPress. So pricing, free WordPress hosting, all of these represent potential content ideas for your business. So as we scroll down here, what's the best WordPress page builder or five best WordPress page builders, WordPress plans. So maybe you go over some different hosting plans, how to create a landing page in WordPress. So all of these represent different keywords, different problems that people are typing in. There's 450 here just using one search of WordPress and entering one filter. So you can find a ton of different keywords here. And what you can eventually do is start with a website, enter a competitor's website here. So I know wpbeginner.com, very popular website. 
So if we just take this, we still have our WordPress filter here. So it's giving us over 1700 keywords, almost 1800 keywords. And you can see here, if we just look by average monthly searches, for example, WordPress tutorial, help with WordPress, e-commerce for WordPress, how to clear cash in WordPress, WordPress membership plugins. These are a ton of different keywords that you can target. If you have a WordPress blog, the hardest part is creating content, not finding keywords, but you can use these tools completely free, keywords everywhere, the Google Keyword Planner, you just need a Google Ads account, and then suval.com. All of these will give you plenty of keywords to target. The really hard part is creating pages for all these different keywords. So hopefully this helps in finalizing your SEO keyword list, understanding how to organize your ideas and some of the topics you wanna to cover. And the more that you create, the more you're gonna rank over time. So continue to create that content and you're gonna keep ranking high. Thank you for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.